Can I ask you some basketball questions? Yeah, sure. Oh. <laughs> if I can remember, right? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, it's, uh, you know, like, I've been doing some research. You've been interviewed to death. I mean, uh, there's a lot of stuff about you yeah. on the Internet, and uh, I don't know what to yeah, say. I, I mean, I might be covering the same things, well, I asking the same questions. I, I try so. not to lie because I don't, don't remember what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to come up with some original questions. Uh, uh, I'll just start way back in the past. I uh, just want to know how you felt emotionally after you were waived by the Knicks uh, and Coach Ned Irish. Uh, you know, from, from past interviews, you, you seem to have a philosophical at outlook or attitude uh, about being cut from the Knicks. So, yeah, well. Uh, and that kind of like uh, exhibits a... a Kind of a, a very Japanese trait of shikata ganai, yeah. can't be helped, uh, which is what my mom used to tell me all the time. You know, when uh, uh, when things happened to me, I grew up. Uh, uh, she'd always say, you know, when things didn't work out, shikata ganai, shikata and she'd tell me to move on to the the next thing uh, in life. Well, it, <laughs> is that it's, what, it's is it's that not that so hard have? because back in those days, you know. The NBA, you didn't, you didn't make millions of dollars like they do now, you know. Uh, let's see, if I remember right, I, I got like 4,000 bucks. Okay, that's well comparable to what my salary would be when I graduated from engineering for a year. So there's not much, not much difference, you know. So uh, I was, uh, and I'm not saying that I, that I was, didn't care whether I got cut or not, but but uh, it, you know it, to get back to, to graduate was a, a a big goal for me, uh, and after I got cut, was well, that was my that was my kind of fallback position. That, that in fact that was my my primary goal was to was to graduate in, in engineering at the university. You know, because I kind of promised my mom. So basketball wasn't a passion that would overtake your engineering no, not goals. In, yeah, not in those days. Because really? oh. it was just barely getting out of the exhibition stage in those days. Oh, really? Yeah. In fact, uh, the NBA didn't get called the NBA until I think the yeah. year afterwards. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know our league. So that you didn't league, see any I can't future? remember what the league's name was, but it it turned out to be the NBA. Yeah. But but it wasn't called the NBA then. Well, you didn't see a future in the NBA, or, you know, well, becoming what it is today. No, no, it it was little more than uh, exhibition, uh, like the Globetrotters were, you know. On. Oh, so your passion was college basketball then? Oh yeah, I guess it was. Yeah, was there more excitement in the country about uh, college basketball than than was professional? In NBA? Yeah, it. it, it it was in those days, you know, I like know I say, it, the, I don't say that it was only strictly exhibition, it was just getting out of that exhibition stage, you know, oh. in those days. And they did have a league, but uh, the the NBA wasn't even called an NBA in 47. Uh, I think they changed the name to NBA uh, in 48 or 49, mm -hmm. yeah. something like that. So. So actually, uh, the the college, the NIT champion was kind of considered the basketball champion of the world at those oh, times. Really? Yeah, well, the foreign countries were hardly taken up, you know. So basketball was almost exclusively uh, a U.S. sport, and so you win the uh, the NIT, which was the biggest tournament in those days, and you were the best team around. So, you know, you kind of figure that you're the, the world champions. Oh, so that would make it your highlight, your, your highlight of, the, of your life. Of right. The college. The college that, that's why it was, it was so important for us individually to, to beat the NIT winners when we won the NCAA. Mm -hmm. See, we lost the NIT oh. the first round that, in 44. And uh, but we got a chance to and uh, won the NCAA 
and then they the, it was wartime, and so they they were playing an exhibition game between the NCAA winner and the NIT winner. Uh, you know, just for uh, uh, well, the NIT was more prestigious. Oh yeah, in those days, it, yeah. it was uh, it was the big tournament in those days, and it it changed in uh, in '50 50 or '51 when. Uh, Kentucky was found uh, to be. Uh, uh, they were champions. They were shaving, shaving points, oh. stuff like that. Yeah, really? yeah. That's why uh, uh, Groza and uh, and who's that? Uh, the little guy that that I guarded, uh, Beard. Beard. Yeah. Ralph Beard. Yeah, they got kicked out of the. Uh, really? They got kicked out of the. Uh, he was like number one. Wasn't he number one in this country? They were number one, yeah. They, they were really good. Because uh, they took their first team, when they graduated, they went into the NBA intact. There's the only team that that ever happened to. Their starting five, when they graduated, went into the NBA intact as a, a new franchise. So Utah played a very clean game. That, that Against Kentucky, right? Yeah. But, no, it said uh, you kept you kept Ralph Beard to one point in that game. Yeah, why? Is that true? One, one How point. did you do that? Uh, well, I had a lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, yeah, he he was uh, uh, voted the outstanding he was like player. Number one player. Yeah. Yeah, he's outstanding player in the. So did that make you outstanding after the game? The most. Well, no. I was, <laughs> oh, that our oh. our. They try to keep keep any uh, uh, publicity down, you know, because uh, uh, the war was. Was he aware of you? Uh, I mean, did he know of you before? No, the game? don't think so. Oh, so you were like a dark horse. Uh, yeah, he, he didn't know what to expect from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he had a he had a bad day. He had, he was a sophomore at that time, so, uh -huh. and uh, he was uh, he was all American and. Uh, uh, he was voted the the outstanding player to to visit the garden oh, yeah. and, and all of that. And, and you put an end to that. Well, he's still pretty good. <laughs> but you, you, I think you once said that that was the best game you've ever had in your life, or something. Like that. Well, as far as result is concerned, yeah. I guess. Yeah. You still remember. And that that, that one point he made, Arnix. Arnie keeps saying, he says, yeah, he says, and I'm the one that fouled him on that. He says, he's, <laughs> so I'll, I'll give you a quote of what you said after that, I guess. Uh, you said, quote, I was lucky being in the right place, uh, got a lot of rebounds and a few steals. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was the leading rebounder that game. Uh -huh. <laughs> Our team was fairly tall, uh, considered to be tall. In those days, because uh, 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 outside of me, the shortest shortest guy was yeah. six six one. But and you were point guard. I mean, I guess you. Well, no. Uh, see, no. we 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 didn't play that kind of a system. Oh. It, it was depending on when you got down the floor as to what position you were going to play. You know, if you were first down the floor, well, then you go to the to, you go to the end, and so then you'd be a a forward. Oh. And so most of the time, I'd be coming up later because. Uh, oh. And so I'd be out, kind of in the in the guard spots to start with. Were you doing outside far away shots? Uh, no. Well. Were you? I guess they they call them uh, mid range shots mid -range now. Range. Yeah, like. Uh, they didn't have free three pointers back no, then. No, no three pointers <laughs> in those days. But yeah, that. But I, I, of course, be, being short, you don't get a chance for many layups either. You know. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Because uh, you know the teams, the big guys, uh, would always be sitting back into the end of the paint, and so you, the little guy wouldn't have much chance. Of, even if you get by your man, you, you always have other guys that you have to go through. So. But he didn't have a chance to shoot in layups. A lot of people were saying that uh, you were you got cut from the Knicks because of your you know five seven being five seven 
and also because there were too many guards on the Knicks team at that time? Or I don't know. If yeah, there were. There were. There were. Uh, uh, I guess three other guys that were were you know fairly fairly short. You know, like six six feet, six one. Mm -hmm. uh, well, then, uh, also other people were saying it was maybe racism too. Or you can't well, any sentiment, uh, I, I don't think so. I think it was just strictly competition. And I, I have to admit that I was, I was pretty naive. You know, I, I'm, I'm playing kind of like I've been in college, and not realizing that you're 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 fighting for uh, your uh, uh, spot on your team. You know, and that's your that's your that's your livelihood. You know, so uh, these guys. Uh, they, they weren't giving me any any tips to help me uh, beat them out or anything, you know. So uh, you mean on the Knicks? On the, yeah, on the Knicks. Oh. So in fact, there was, there was one game that they were highlighting that that uh, they said that oh, White says you're, you're going to start this game, and I was supposed to guard this this one guy in Providence that uh, was. Uh, you know, really a hot shot, and these guys on my team was telling me, he says, you know, he, he says you gotta watch him. He says he's uh, right-handed, but he 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 goes, he fakes and goes left. So he says, he says, uh, you know, overload on your left and don't let him go by. Well, when I got in there, I was, you know, kind of edging that way. He went by me twice on the right side. Yeah. He went the other way. <laughs> yeah, he went the other way. So, and and I, I didn't realize that uh, that uh, those guys, either they were trying to play a joke on me or, or wanted me to look bad. I don't know which. But. It wasn't a rookie thing, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So, I, you know, when, when I think about it afterwards, I, I was pretty naive of me. To, oh. But I heard, well, I heard you had another, uh, the opposite experience on the University of Utah and all your high school coming up, all the teams you played for in Utah, you, they, they seem to get along with you pretty well. They, they seem to you know, like you. And, you, know, you would... Oh yeah, all my classmates, and, you know, in those days, they, people didn't move around very much. So a lot of the kids that I was in grade school with ended up in high school with me. So, yeah, yeah. so oh, all, all, the, uh, all the way through, uh, yeah, I, had, you know so I had all kinds of, uh, of support uh, and and uh, even on the University of Utah and well on Utah that when I got to Utah I didn't know anybody so oh. that was a complete different experience but but those I I really got along well with all, all of my teammates all the way through and and uh, this this one guy especially in in, in uh, junior high school and high school and and. Uh, and and junior college, I even played with him two years in junior college, and we just really got to know each other really well. So, like I say, uh, I knew him inside and out. Never made a bad pass because I knew where he was going to be. Wow. You still keep in contact with your oh, well, he's, I I didn't. He he was even in engineering, same way with me. Uh -huh. So. Uh, uh, but after college, he uh, he he went into the service, and uh, uh, I only saw him once after oh, that. Oh. Um, one more question here. Uh, you know, you seem to still have an interest in basketball, uh, from what I see on the, the internet, uh, and especially young Asian American uh, players who have been recruited and to sign up and play for the NBA, uh, from Jeremy Lin. To uh, I guess Yuta Tabase, yeah, from Japan, who was right. the first Japanese player right? Tabase, uh, to play in the NBA. You still have contact with him, or do you no? I don't. Him? I was yeah. on a uh, Japanese television program with him, though. Oh uh, yeah. Wish him good luck, cause he was still playing. Oh, he was. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, how about does the future look bright for these, uh, for young Asian American players who? You know, we're hoping to get into the NBA. Well, they're getting bigger, and that's what they need. Yeah. But the thing about it is, is that the, the you know the, the 
players are getting bigger, but uh, the game is getting rougher. So, oh, yeah. so you so, so, so you gotta you gotta be bigger, yeah. tougher. Yeah, I, I know you've met Jeremy, Jeremy Lin, yeah. but uh, you seem to be excited and look forward to, to meeting all the young players, I guess. Uh, uh, so basically, isn't that the role of uh, a mentor or a pioneer, uh, as many people <laughs> yeah. have called you? Uh, well, you I, don't think you're a pioneer. I don't consider myself but a that's the But that's what mentor, a mentor and yeah. pioneer does. So, yeah. you know, well, You sort of like... Uh, you know, giving professional uh, and personal advice, encouragement to these guys. Uh, you know, and you appear to be quite comfortable in that role. Yeah, well, I. You must I, go to games I, often, I, right? I can't can't say that I can give good advice, but I can I can give support anyway.